That's right. It's crickets. We're just being crickets. We just like being crickets. It's one of our problems. We don't appreciate how important uh, that truth is and how much it works against us. As I, as I sit here and just think about it, the more that we do, the more that we are successful in how we how we approach things, the people that I work with, and how the success is versus what I see the majority of the population doing uh, is kind of telling about a lot of things. Uh, whether or not that's going to tell us the future, I don't know. There's always this seemingly this thing that happens at the end that everyone gets so fed up that everyone starts to move and act, and it becomes the mob rule again, but with a little bit of determination to stop the pain from the previous condition. And then we wonder why we look at history and it repeats itself. And I'm starting to look at this thing and say, because we never look forward enough to say, wait a minute, we have some certain principles to uphold, and we have certain things and capacities to maintain, or, or else life will repeat itself and the next cockistocracy comes along because we don't stop them. It's pretty simple. We kind of tend to forget that we may want to live, if I can say it, with the non-aggression principle, but there's there's a whole world of people out there that don't believe that at all. And that seems to be our problem. Again, all this stuff I talk about has nothing to do with when things are going right. You wouldn't hear me if things were going right. We wouldn't even know each other. It's when it's going wrong, and it's gone so wrong. And I get to the point where here I've dedicated over three decades of my life wondering what the heck happened. Because all of a sudden I just realized it was just an impossibility of making it happen the way I was told coming, growing up, and and being told what was going to, you know, what you could do. It was not for us to do that. And then we saw 9-11, and it's like, wow, okay, they went and done it. I don't care who done it. They went and done it. And that means they had a plan. And they could see the plan back before that. And so we're in that. They said America changed. I don't believe America changed at all, actually. They're going to make it change. That's the that's the big deal. This And this is no different than any other collaborative, collusional type of condition that I, I, I see in the uh, co- coordination condition. Uh, where you have people cooperating with each other to destroy something and push an agenda through. And so we have I've learned to see what those agendas are, and they're real easy to start picking up. Once you get, again, the eyes to see, it's really, really easy. But this is BTW RLM 275, if I got the numbers all right. And to get you the blogcaster when I, when I put it up after the broadcast. Uh, for those of you listening in at anywhere else, you want to hear it live, you can go to rlmradio.xyz on uh, the afternoons I'm, pl- I'm doing it, or will you just get the Real Liberty Media broadcast that goes out with all the hosts, all the different shows we have, uh, that broadcast out in the, in the files that you get to hear. And uh, I guess I can just suggest for your se- for you all that you can't listen to me for only a few minutes, and you can't listen to me even maybe just even one broadcast. I talk over a continuum of time, and I. I broach to you all kinds of different things over that time, and it's I'm understanding, and I and I get people who respond to me over t- the same amount of time I've been broadcasting, and they say if I listen to you a number of times, I, I start to understand. And I wish it could be separate. I don't. I wish it could be different, but it's not. Apparent. I just don't know how else to do what I tell you what I say to show you it's all interrelated and how. And then we take that knowledge. We it, it starts forming up what that is. It's actual. It actually identifies itself as a thing. And then we can address it. And so that's why it starts to come over time. It's like you hear it long enough, you start to per- perceive it because your mind has been working on all these little points. It didn't have a point. It had made no sense to you coming. And it's the way they have, they come at you. I do the kind of like the same thing, not that I intend to. But to me, I have every broadcast is sealed is a sealed component. It, it will prove itself out. It proves itself if you understood enough of the background. However, when you haven't understood all that, over time, it takes over time to hear these concepts and finally really understand how they actually work. And to, really what you're doing is destroying what you thought you knew in favor of what is really the reality that you're up against, even though that reality is an illusion. And that's the really interesting part. Uh, the, the, the thing that we're dealing with is, is a fabricated reality. And it deals on the fact that you don't address it. It deals on deception. 
and I've been able to, again, this coordination thing and then looking at what the was allowed by legal, which was then allowed to be anti your laws and something other because you consented out of that. It, it tell it, it was it was the definitive statement of what we are suffering today. That requires that's by definition someone's attacking your li- your lifestyle in so many different levels and ways, and it just happens to be all the same people that are, claim the mantle of authorita. And that that's enough for most people. Now, those people that it's not enough, the percentage of people that actually do something against it is again a a big is a, a, a microcosm of the mass. Those that do see it and don't like it still won't step up, I, I, at least in the proper ways, or don't take the time it takes to figure out how to do that quickly, engage and then defeat what their part is. And I see that all the time. Just talking to someone who I work with very well and for years. And he was the same, a guy had come along and said, I've got, I've got, I see this thing and I don't understand it. What, what do you know about it? And I explained it to him. Then I explained what he was up, partially what he was up against. I explained partially how he was supposed to address it. And with those little bits and pieces, as I tell you, I set him up on the path he was going to go down and I explained what the end looked like and I explained some things I'd seen. And I said, and you're heading in right here, and you need to, to do that. You have to go here and do this, and know that, and learn this. And guess what? He did. He went out and did what he had to do. And now it's been years and years I've been working with him. And he's finally coming to the, to the point now, because he sees there's a mass ignorance in people. We as a people don't understand the things that I would talk about, or now he can talk about, that he sees, that are right there for you to read, if you just settle down and see the right things to read. And so... That's partly what I do here uh, every week. I just go through a bunch of stuff. Hopefully somebody, because I have to find some interest for somebody who's listening. And hopefully that will snag you just enough to slow you down and make you look at something. Make you look at the principles I'm bringing to explain to you. That's This is where you dig in. You dig in right around in here. And start working through this method because this is the way you defeat this thing you find, this is the thing that's threatening you. This is the thing that is not just threatening, but actually harming you. So, again, you can't listen to the broadcast. I wish I could make it different. I wish you all had my knowledge. Uh, we, you could start from where I, my foundation is. You don't have to have all what I know, just the foundation. I wish you all had that. And I can just know without it, you're not going to, you don't, you just not really appreciate, you're not going to be able to appreciate what I'm saying. And you'll argue with me. Uh, there's no, I mean, it happens all the time. You just, it just, I don't know how, why it is, but that's the way it is. And until, and I, and my friend, I was just talking to him, and I guess that's why it's partly on my mind. He's coming through the same problem. A bunch of people he's talking to want to do something, but they'll fight him every step of the way against what they ought to be doing. And it's really a fascinating dynamic. So I guess I'm telling you all to prepare that for yourself. This is what you will do if you're sitting in what you think is a knowledge. And you're, and you're handed something that uh, doesn't agree with that knowledge, and yet it's the answer. You'll reject it. And you'll work real hard to continue to reject it. And I, I get all the denials, but this is the, the fact of our experience, uh, not just me, and not just the friend I'm talking to, but it happens over and over. And I have to now, now that he's come to that part, uh, I was able to explain to him that and uh, show some examples prior to him coming to the same point. And I'm telling you this as of people who listen to me, you, there's a there's a fight in you uh, over some of these things, in coming up with ideas and not ideas or, or, or excuses to to not engage somewhere, and I, I I don't know what else to say. I've committed to st- at least stopping what I can stop in my skill set, and uh, an excuse wasn't going to do it. In fact, I mean, as I keep telling you, the more you, you we are under we are against a formidable foe. And the more I get into this, the more I'm having to step up higher and higher into more tough things to learn and explain to myself, understand for myself to re-implement and engage this thing because it's that formidable. And so it all depends on where you want to, how, how you want to engage. And it's almost, a, you can almost sense that it's a trap. It's like there's no end to it. And I sense that. And that's why I said that's almost the fool's errand. But because we do get relief from it, if we press hard enough, I don't know that it's completely that errand, that fool's errand. I think there is a way, and it's just a matter to me now, as I keep telling you, 
It takes more and more of us to be properly speaking in the proper action. And that's dictated by the attack. It's not by us. It's not by me. It's how you have to present, how you have to go after what's coming after you. What's denying you, actually, is what it ends up being. Uh, and I found the difficult, most difficult one is when they stop talking. And so that's where, for myself, that's in a couple of uh, matters that I'm helping on and advancing. That's where we are. The system will not respond when you get the right answer. They don't try to deny it either. That's the other th fascinating thing. They could use all the tricks. All the tricks that I know they use, they don't use against me anymore. And I think it's because I know those tricks. I don't talk about them. We, I write to them. I write to anticipate the breach, and I destroy it before it even has air, before it even gets a breath. And it doesn't go on and on. It's just strictly looking at the, the, the action of the supposed official who's an obstruction. And so there's the point of the remedy is there. Matter of law, if you just apply it, you have a remedy. It's that we have been occupied by a people who got into government and decided they will do better and for themselves, whether that's privately to them or by an agenda, some belief system. It's counter to the law, actually. And so I've, I try to come here to tell you how to better address these things. The things that threaten us or are attacking us or harming us. The irreparable harms, these, as I've explained, these equity, the equitable actions, these equity, not equitable, but equity actions that you can move forward aren't an opinion. They're laid out in fact. Uh, they're what your opinion may say exists as you have to find in writing uh, that exists and then that someone has trespassed that in some way. Breach, if you want to go breach as a some sort of a contract that you can develop, and there's a couple of ways to go at that, or simply just having no authority. Uh, that's the crime right, the crime against you right up front. I keep telling you about those felonies. Those are pretty quickly to, to do. But uh, So, at any rate, so uh, then we have our capacities in us, and this and that and the other that's been stealing, stolen from us, and it, you know, it's, it's kind of, I, ca I can't get into all the facets of, of all the things all the time uh, on the broadcast. I can only explain to you on subject matter points, if you think this thing is important, this is how I think you need to start to address it is what you get from me here. If you're not interested in doing a thing, then you're really wasting your time. Go watch cat pictures and go listen to the mainstream media news, even listen to alt alternative media news. So, as I tell you, I'm beyond the media. I will tell you from the media the notice that they are giving us, and then I will tell you from there, if you're interested in that subject matter, how we can start to best approach it. And I say best approach it because there's no silver bullets. These guys uh, really are cagey. And, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a different uh, type of an approach. The problem is it's like we've been run into a, uh, a box canyon. And we have no, we cannot, well, we're in the box canyon. Now what do you do? And guess what? There's some things you can do. Even so, even with that, you've been funneled down into a small space. There's, there's a lot of power in there if you understand what your defenses are. It's um, well, I can, I hate, I, I almost, well, I'm going to say it. I don't know if I like saying it, but it is almost like a video game. You just got to figure your way through the room, and there's ways, always ways to do it. And so now we're back onto the illusion and whether or not the Matrix is not a movie and what all that. But I know that the guys that I deal with or those that listen to what I say and do what they have to do, and I, I think I, in, I explained a miner who had uh, didn't think he was going to get the mining law enough to be able to apply it. Next thing we know, he's applying it. He makes an, a very good impression against the agency's impositions against him, which now translates again in another mining claim that he's just gotten to keep the government. They don't even want to mess with him. He didn't have the sugar pine mine problem. Right, he didn't have the problems of all the other miners. He applied the law correctly. He took the right attitude. He approached it properly, and he presented a position that they will not address at all. And I don't know about y'all, but I think that's at this point, this is probably the best thing we could hope for. It's not his opinion. We lay out the law. The government doesn't want to see the law because that's the, because they know they're violating it. The people running an agenda. The consensus process is not law or constitution or anything. You want to see that statement right out of their own document, go to Jefferson Mining District and go look on the left side and look at the, the caution that they give their own people. The consensus process is not any of these lawful things. 
it's an avert it's the uh, the parallel construction when you all start to understand that that's what's going on in everything you watch everything you see is this parallel construction and sometimes it's not so easy to crack the nut but they are the i've looked if you i found out if you look far enough and you got enough background in you you can develop the the ability to to at least well at least get as i was talking to my friend i said well it, at least you have someone now that has a key that they can stick in the door and turn. And before, they were just pounding on the outside of the door complaining. Now you've handed them a key and they can turn it. They have to turn it, but you've given them the key to open that door to start the process. Before, they didn't have it. Before, they were objecting to him and what he was offering. And all he was offering was showing them how to, inside this law that everybody wants to wants to condemn, were the answers. And in fact, there were the savings clauses I tell you about. All your laws and rights are saved in face of the occupation. That's how you know you're in an occupation. They're writing laws that say, provided that you don't violate the prior law, you can do this legal thing. And when you start to see this, you start to realize what you're looking at is not what was what actually was supposed to be maintained, and it wasn't maintained. So what what am I saying? It, it, it comes right back down to you. You see a wrong that's happening. Uh, you can you can either decide to let it go, or you can complain about it and, and let it go, or you you have to make that hard decision, and you have to meet your deficiencies, meet your inadequacies, and be honest with those, fix them, and then move forward. And they're relatively easily fixed. It may be what you might call a steep learning curve, but that's just because you're so deep in your in your um, ignorance, actually. You won't give in to the actual truth you see. You want to resist and hold on to your old, old, old ideas. So behind here, but you get behind the woodshed. We get, I'm the only one caring about you enough to bring you out behind the woodshed. That was BYOB. For those of you that see Twitter, I see BYOB as a hashtag. It means a couple things. It's BYO is bring you out behind the woodshed to show you the principles. So I'm not wanting to beat on you. I want you to see the principles that you didn't get. And then you can bring someone else behind that, that's actually violating you. And you can properly bring them behind the woodshed and then make an impression upon them. And so it's, we also have full disclosure, UFO disclosure behind the woodshed. It's the unilateral final option. The UFO disclosure is the unif- unilateral final option. And that's evolutionary engagement. That's your UFO disclosure. Till you step up unilaterally and engage this thing, oppresses you and continues to oppress you and continues to act as a parasite on your life and commit continues to diminish you and those that are wielding that 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 uh, condition are going to prosper against you and then the other byob is uh, bring your own brain brain no it's not bring your own booze it's bring your own brain you got to bring your brain don't bring someone else's brain and don't bring the one that someone gave you and you accepted was wrong Bring your own brain. So this is what we do again behind which a long way to get here it doesn't say a whole lot. Uh, I, what I'm saying is very important, but it all depends on if you're receptive uh, to it. And a lot of people don't hang around long enough to, to, to do anything, and they think they go off and they know stuff, and I look around and see nobody really doing much of anything correctly. We muddle in these problems. I've watched this for decades. So I think I have a pretty good perspective on when they're uh, something going right now, whether it's whether you're muddling or whether it's going wrong, pretty quick. And as I've said, the problems I'm coming up with are people in the system absolutely violating all the processes you know about. And these are the people that are behind the scenes that make it plausibly look like they've been not violating those rules. And you have to come to the point when you understand the rules well enough on how to grab these people up and, and collect them up with a record that shows they're the ones that are violating you, obstructing justice, obstructing maladministration. This is what it all comes down to. This is how they stop. What a Luke 11:52 for those of you that want to go to a Bible and look at it. It was said, told to us before. What you woe unto the ye lawyers? What was it, the Pharisees and scribe, whatever all those people are in the bed? Those were the lawyers. Those were the law, so-called lawmakers. Woe unto ye lawyers! You hid the key of knowledge, and those that entered in ye hindered. What did I just say to my friend? I said, you gave him the key to turn the door to open. There's going to be an obstruction there, but they're going to be able to turn that key and open the door when they want to. They have to. Until they do, they're not going to find the obstruction. When they find the obstruction, we can deal with it. Why? Because we have someone that wants to. 
Any one of you that wants to. So, anyway, we got to, quite a bit comes behind the woodshed over time. I know it's a whole new thing. I know it seems to be foreign. I know it is foreign. But it's, it's, uh, it's something you can use. It's not something you can just talk about or complain about. It's something that you can actually impose. And you look around and find the evidence of the things I talk about that it's still not dead. We're not dead yet. There's still people out doing some interesting discussions and decisions even inside the system. And I say use the, see the system is an interesting thing to use because it becomes the, the office that uses, that they, the club that they beat, the big club, the government club, they beat you with. And so when they say something, you, you, when it advantage, makes advantage, use it. I mean, this is a, all, all is fair in love and war, I guess now. And I don't know about, I don't see much love there, but, uh, it's all, all war. And so they drop a club, you better be able to pick it up if you've got a spare, if you have, if you have a spare or hand to pick it up. And this is how this, this is uh, working at this point. So we did get some information coming out. We have this government uh, imposed harm upon y'all. We're now finding out, they call it the, what, the opioid, uh, problem and we find the government's the government is definitely in part of that uh, allows that it's it's the opioids are are pharmaceuticals that are allowed by government to be prescribed by licensees of government and so they're the cause this is the walking wounded of their, their own problem and we don't stop any of this but it's coming out people are not everybody's together in the same herd of that of that group uh, things just stop making sense for people that are sometimes in the system. And here's a, a story about this. Precedent set as court orders government to pay for medical pot instead of opioids for workers' compensation. For all of, all of you all that are needing this thing, uh, this uh, this herb, this plant to help you, and getting the big objection from the federal government while it, pr- pr- it promotes a war on drugs, which is a war, it's a declared war. People don't appreciate this. And it is aiding the, uh, the prohibition aids the, like any prohibition, aids the pro- high profit black market of the government itself in importing all this stuff to make people addicted to the system and the problem. And then on the other side, legalize harmful things that they claim will help and profit from their licensees issuing those. And the side effects of which are what society is now having to have to uh, deal with. But it deals with it, the society, the people uh, of the society, deal with it at a distance or as a victim of it. Or as a pointer of a finger, uh, a pointer of a finger of it. And so what the point is, is that the government continues to be able to run its, run its scam and scheme on y'all. Uh, because we don't stop and turn. And I say, look at this. Here's the first crack, in, another crack in the porcelain of, regarding medical marijuana. And I'm really kind of focused on that because it appears to be the big crime against people where the government outlawed a plant, which they ought not to under, under, under land law. They have no right to outlaw this plant if you make it for yourself. I'll end it there. I mean, I think there's an argument that says you could actually sell it too, but even so, there should be, and you'll look very carefully. It's all about commerce. They'll they'll re, they'll fraudulently frame everything you do in the commerce uh, contention. They'll bring it into a contraband condition, and that's admiralty for those of you keeping track. Uh, and then they'll bring it bring it in as uh, as that's a violation that way, when in fact it's just a plant, and you didn't assert you didn't assert in a in a collateral attack uh, that you had a right to do that, and no one ever has. And I'm not saying to go do this because the penalties are way stiff for a lot of y'all that are, well, for everybody, but I mean a lot of y'all that don't don't understand how this may work. This is not an experiment I'm telling. I'm just giving you an, an insight that now we have the people and the, and the motivation to make medical uh, and recreational, so-called mar- recreational marijuana available. The medical side of which I said stay focused on because that's going to be the biggest, most solid foundation you can start right now in the condition we have. Even though I just told you there should be no limitation on it, that's why I say don't don't decriminalize it because that means it's more it's just criminalized at a lower level or regulable and taxable, and that's the plunder. And I said I told you a long time ago when these legislations came in, I could see all the writing on the wall, 
this was done only because of the, the revenue and the control. Now, what that did, I told you, if you look very carefully, that also leaves you susceptible to become a, uh, because they've made it legalized, then there's rules you have to follow. They can attack everyone and just claim that they didn't follow the rules. And now you're back into the deal of it. But they also attached what? The seizure of your property. I said, so be careful of all this. So I said, stay on the medical, medical marijuana because the Supreme Court went real quick and said, no, that you can't, you can't interfere with that. That's why I went there. In this war, this is where you have to go. Why my interest? I have no interest in it myself, but I see lots of people who do have interest. When I see little babies on the Internet that are grand mal seizured because of a vaccine they got, and they can take a marijuana, uh, whatever it is, whatever works for them, it comes in many forms, and the grand mal seizures stop and stay stopped, I think that all that's all the proof I need. I don't need it. They need it. Who am I to say no? Who is government then? To, if I have no right to say no, what's government who's supposed to represent our, the rights that we have? I have no right. They have no right. It has no right, whatever the heck it is. And so this is important. Precedent set a court orders government pay medical pot instead of opioids, which also comes together as a problem. The government doesn't know what to do. It slaps itself around trying to figure out how to do the opioid problem. It started but through its prescriptions. For those of you in 420 Medical and want to end this nonsense and end at least the drug war against it, here's another point where we the crack in the porcelain is a judge in New Jersey. This may not actually be actionable outside of this area, except that it shows a precedent, as they say, that you can now bring as reason, judicial reasoning. And it says, in a major victory for medicinal cannabis rights, a New Jersey workers' compensation judge has ordered a freehold township to pay for an injured worker's medical marijuana despite an insurance carrier's objection stemming from the drug status, Schedule 1 status, as a controlled substance under federal law. So you understand that they're taking, someone attacked the very thing that the government was saying, or the the licensees of the government called the, the insurance companies were, were licensees of the government that they relied on the government's objection to ma- marijuana as a, under federal law, that, under this judge's interpretation, does not hold water. And someone had to attack that. If you don't attack it, you get the oppression. And this is what I've been trying to advance to you all. Not asking you to go do that and put yourself at risk. If you find yourself at this point or you understand what the risks are and want to accept this battle, here it is. This is how you challenge these oppressive uh, conditions. And to fail to challenge them, is going to continue them. Uh, the extension of this paragraph, but people will no longer be forced to rely solely on opioids for treatment of pain. That's a, 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 a you, huge, huge, huge statement. Means we got medical purpose and it's been judicially acknowledged. New Jersey's workers' compensation judge, Lionel Simon, invoked the necessity of not forcing injured workers onto opiates that are killing people as he ordered Freehound Township to pay for a municipal employee's medical marijuana. Wow. Government employee can get covered by their work, by the workman's comp. Under necessity. And necessity of what? Not being forced to associate with opiates that could harm somebody. That's a, that's impliedly a, a an article, um, your First Amendment rights under the federal constitution as applied to the state through the 14th. So he doesn't say through that, I didn't read the order, I'm just going off this paragraph. This is the way you construct your 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 avoidances, your equity uh, collateral attacks, or your defenses. And and this is what I'm trying to get here. I know they're complicated, but if you never know the terminology, and I know lots of people don't know the terminology, uh, but this is what the level of ignorance that we've been educated and inculcated into that keeps us from understanding the most simple things. And that's what uh, I guess my conversation with my friend was. Is he's finally seeing that large groups of people have don't have the basic clue of what they're up against, uh, what to do, how to go about it. Don't have the basic actual function of the government in order to know where to go. And so this is all of our, this is, on us, as a, we are not the massive educated people we were required to be. You, I almost can't expect us to be anywhere but where we've been been dragged to. 
The only question is, are you going to continue to agree with it? Whatever your infirmity is, mental, physical, uh, whatever, spirit, whatever, you got to fix that if you want this harm to stop, and you got to go after this. you got to get outside of yourself and go go fix the attack and go after the attacker. You, and there's ways to do it that aren't aren't physical. Like I said, the mining issue is really kind of fun in a way because I can show you a, all these federal ag- all these agency life. The federal agencies are powerless, and it's all done by letters. I don't no no guns are brought out. No one gets shot. They fear the pen here absolutely. They don't want to deal with it. And and I, I ask you to listen to what I'm saying about this because it's not just that you produce the law. You produce the fact that they impose the law wrongly. That's a felony. Now you got them in a crime. It's not that hard, actually, what I say here. But it's not specific to any one thing any one of you may understand. And so I have to talk in generalities, and it may be specificity on one little thing you're not interested in, like mining. Most of my, my, most of my listeners may, may not be interested in mining. I, I suspect that's the case. I suspect that if we had a massive miners that knew what they were doing, they would all joined up in, uh, in, my, in Jefferson Mining District, and we would have been taking names and doing other things. But see, the people are apathetic and they don't want to do that. And that's my a disappointment to me, but I, I won't stop at this point yet. I, can't, I won't stop it because of that. There's enough few people here and there that come up that do wonderful work and do action, take action and, and solve things. We'll probably never hear of it all, but it's out there that I just keep coming and hope most of you start, we'll pick it up eventually. So here's a point. A judge rules that marijuana is a counter to opiates for pain control. There's a proof. Well, you take that into another place, especially like the FDA, the DA, like I was asking you before in the comment period. Uh, you can still open that up, as a matter of fact, when it's fraudulently shown fraudulently that they're making this thing wrong, but I won't go into all that technical stuff. Uh, then you could take this point here, and it becomes one of your bag of facts. In another jurisdiction, it's been ruled that opiates... Can be the pain can be controlled instead of damaging opiates, notwithstanding their license and the FDA approval, that it's damaging to certain people. You just become that per that one that person they'll say, become the man that's being affected adversely by their licensees, and show in the record that you have take benefit, and you will make a place for yourself at least and those similarly situated if you go to equity so you can speak to the wider society is what i'm trying to get you all to see you don't just speak for yourself in fact you get get yourself get yourself out the way is what i've been trying to focus everyone on you bring the irreparable injury that came to you and you say but i'm going to help help all the others because of it and that's the distinction i told you between an at law case action at law action and an equity action the outlaw, you're looking at damages for harm to you. In equity, you're doing the punitive damages to stop the oppression, uh, the wrongful act to continue in the future for you and everyone else in society. In a way, I look at that as pretty, a pretty noble kind of a, a action in my mind. And we're, but it's in a way, it's not. It's just it's the way we have to now go at it because we were so ignorant that they got over on us, and that's the one tool we have left in order to pull this off. At least the one tool I'm finding that has more value than most of it, all the other stuff I hear. So here we have a case, folks. You get this in the blogcast. We're going to keep moving on. Way getting behind. Another thing about this, we have not just the judge saying so, but now a place in uh, what, Lawrence County, Georgia, of all places. Wow. You hear about their highway, highway theft that goes on there with this ruling, using the war, war on drugs to take and steal your stuff and all the money in your pocket, whether or not it was drug-related, and get, and when to keep it. Uh, this is a medical marijuana patient in a state where a plant is still illegal, was recently fa- court was in court facing charges on possession and manufacturing. See, possession and manufacturing. Manufacturing for what, folks? For medical use or for, for profit, for sale? See, that's what you, you're missing here, and this is what part of the thing is, that they always tie the manufacturing for for sale to the possession and they claim that's prohibited and if i just go with that what if you were to sever the manufacturing for for sale and you were able to show even that law 
was not. But this didn't even, even touch there because this was a jury that nullifies the law in its entirety when the one, I think it was a guy, came in and he said, this law is wrongly applied to me as a medical marijuana patient that you gets benefit from this over everything else that's available to me from the medical profession. And he convinces the jury, this is a very difficult way to go, but he was able to, to, to convince a jury uh, that that was the case. That he was needing medical marijuana for his condition and nothing else would suffice. And they agreed and they acquitted him by saying the law that they char was charged with was unlawful as applied to him. That's jury nullification. Now he had to go through the problem. The judge tried to interfere with what would be one of the attorneys it was interfered with by the judge to say that's not the proper interpretation in the Constitution that allows for jury nullification, but they present, prevailed anyway. And so this is not a cut and dried silver bullet either, but there's evidence here that a jury is now sympathetic when you bring before them the fact of the wrongfulness of the, of the law being applied to you. Let me go back to the point. You only have the rights that you assert. You, you give me you, every one of you, not me, you. You are the only one that can assert your rights. You can't do that without engaging those rights. In other words, doing nothing will not assert rights and you will get what you gave. And that's if the club upside your head, if that's the taser in your back or the bullet in your brain, that's what it's going to be. So here's another example that a jury can stop once the guy asserts his rights Maybe it was a woman here. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I can't get by the name. The name is pretty odd. Anyway, that you are engaging properly and you uh, are able to get out for yourself at least. This is not the equity side. This is the at-law side. The jury comes in and says your, your so-called peers in your community, which are actually chosen from your commerce driver's license registries for the most part in most of these states. Uh, so that's a biased jury, isn't it? It's not one of your peers as a man or a woman. It's a commerce entity looking at you. See how they do all this commerce stuff? They got it. They got you by. They got you by the. Well, they got you. And so uh, the, it requires now that you get the sympathy of the jury was able to go with it. So here's another way. Here's another evidence that a jury was sympathetic that found that the law was no good. Now this, I would use this. Forget about the jury nullification. I would just say the jury said that this in another state uh, said that this law was no good. I want to apply it here. And then you at least get a record that says, why wouldn't you be able to make a defense against your natural rights to choose and not associate with the medical profession that is actually harming you? And you bring out the opiate pro opioid problem, can't you? Now, I just gave you, a, like, that was 20 seconds of power right there, if you got what I was saying. You may want to go back and listen. Just write that out and then go look at the steps you take in that little statement is how you address all this stuff, actually, but this is a particular to here. I'm trying to give you the tools in a very short order. It doesn't sound like much. Maybe it's, maybe you're missing it, but this this uh, the way you address this is not that complicated. Even in the face of an oppression, you, if you understand what your natural rights to things are, actually, and you're innocent, actually, and you're not bogged down by all this nonsense I hear about on the Internet that, that says you're, you're an ongoing slave, by various actions of your mom, or whatever. Now, there are some actions I tell you you're involved in with your own signature and your applications, but even so, that wouldn't have anything to do with this, would it? And so, you learn to, you learn to, you learn to jump in where you have to and don't attach any of the millstones that you, where you don't need to. But anyway, here's another example of how you can fight the jury. Here's jury nullification information for you. Here's the man who stepped or woman that stepped up to do it. There's an attorney involved that actually was being involved to defend that. That's a powerful statement on its own in this story. So in this one, the second report that I have for you, very important stuff is sitting in here. If you just observe what's going on and start to think, if you're interested again, how you might be able to apply it local to you or for you, maybe for a friend. Maybe contact these people and find out, hey, how did you do that? What did you do? What, how can we get, do you know someone in my state? How do we end this nonsense against the medical use and the nonsense of the federal oppression that sits as a fraud on all this as well, and notwithstanding their apparent authority to commit that fraud? And I think if you attack that, now you're going to be also one more step against it as well. 
And this leads us back into, I told you before, you start getting into some of these federal agency things where they have like, it looks like they're all powerful, and they start turning around to third parties for their expertness. You have to go to the third parties and show how they're not so expert. And you commit that to be the fraud of omission to not be a complete story, is what I would also put on this on this Amer- uh, DEA's or the F- F- D- DEA uh, designation of Schedule 1, or what I think it's FDA. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, FDA. But uh, this is how you attack them. You attack them the way I'm saying to you. If you don't attack them, they keep this control on your lives. You think, I'm going to be free? No, you, you're playing games. Well, i got to do what i got to do. Well, you don't got to do this, and you're just making excuses now. I've given you numbers of paths to show you that the law, the underlying foundation of why we exist, and different than the whole entire world in the United States of America, is to be relied on and prevails at every instance when you properly understand it and properly apply it. As I was saying before, when you understand that the disposal of the land is by evidence of a grant, and it's a domestic treaty and the evidence of a patent, and the patent is the evidence of what what the government can and can't do, and, and against a patent it can't do anything, and then you find a statute inside a state that says, hey, this patent evidence shall be recognized and you can't do anything to interfere with it. Why wouldn't you just make that as a four points on a piece of paper and say, this is my uh, attack against you, my, inju- my equity attack against your right to do this, and those similarly situated? Why wouldn't you just do that? Why would you take this other idea, oh, I got to do what I got to do because I got, I got no, no, no other thing to do? Well, that's just an ignorance and an, or an apathy, one or the other. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. It's not going to fulfill you. It's not going to become make your freedom. Uh, you have to have freedom in there because you have to stay within that parameter. But that freedom within that parameter is quite freeing. And and so, but this is okay. So we have the judge in the system says no. You, you this this one came to us and said this stuff where this this cannabis works where this opiate opiates are harmful and i'm going to allow that distinction for him the second case is the jury comes in and says no he needs it for medical and the other ones are harmful we'll tell you that he doesn't have to sub- that the law is wrongly applied in other words that guy didn't argue the the facts of the law or anything he didn't argue the evidence he just Appeal to the jury to say, no, you gotta, you gotta decide that this is not applicable to me. But he does it after the fact as a presentation that he has to persuade them. The, the way I was telling you, when you look at the agencies and minors, we do that right out of the rules. I don't need a jury to do this. Very same thing. And if I, if you got that, then you just got that I'm telling you, it's all got, you're looking for the same pathway. It doesn't matter how you look at this, where you're looking at the subject matter. It's the same pathway. You just have the pathways, provisions, and elements to deal with. In the in the case of a jury, you have to rely on persuading the jury. In the case of an agency, rules. All I got to do is be the rules and just show they don't apply. It's the same end, the same outcome. The the law that they apply, that they're attempting to apply, is not applicable. It's not not going to be able to be put on you. You're not subject to that, notwithstanding it's set, the law and the rule that's, and the agents that says otherwise. This is the same method over and over. So, but this, but so you leave it to government, folks. They've got a self-inflicted wound that their licensees of government allowing these opioids into the system to be prescribed to you, and you take them and get yourself all addicted because you won't read the data sheets and you won't kind of think about. All the side effects you're going on, you go, oh, I'm going to get, oh, I like this feeling, whatever the heck it is. It's like legal heroin addiction. But what do we tell ourselves about all this? Or those that are lulled into it like a kid in a can, you know, here you want a little bit of candy kid? Yeah, well, they do that and all of a sudden now you're hooked. Now what? But it takes a will to pull back. See, that was the draw. That was the trap. They get you in. You have these opioids. They're self-inflicted problem the government causes underneath the war of uh, the war of, of drugs. All this is enveloped in this opioid question. If you would just jump into it, you'd you'd blow this one completely open. But there's an alternative now that finally comes up, and we get to see it's cannabis that can be used to combat the opioids. Do you think the government goes there? No. When you leave it to government, when you don't step in and do these things, government does this. North Carolina town battles opioid epidemic by using robots to test 
people's poop. That's the government's answer to your opioid epidemic in this country. They want to make a robot to go look at your your septic system. Go look inside your your uh, your sewer system. So when you let the government handle it, that's how the government handles it. When you step up, you can stop it from the beginning. How about just as I was, I was mentioned on, on a Twitter, government seems to work on the wrong end first, don't it? Instead of looking at the front end, maybe choosing cannabis that we now have multiple facts, notwithstanding the federal government's position, which I would declare as a fraud, and for an ulterior motive for money and control, I would just throw all that in there, but not using cannabis, because we have other people now that are saying that they get to, they're using it for that, and now we've got people that recognize that. It wasn't just me claiming it. Now I have 12 people in a jury that said so. It only takes two to make a witness of fact, folks. I also have another case that the guy says I need it, and the judge says you're right, and that it harms people. It kills them. Notwithstanding what the FDA and the DEA says, use all that. It's all line, just single sentences in discussion. Instead of doing cannabis and allowing it, no, they want to go put a robot in your sept in your sewer system and sniff on your poop. To me, I mean, it's just kind of like the biggest joke going in a way. This is the the epitome of what goes on in government. We agree to this by not responding against it. Those in North Carolina, jump on this one, folks. Those you, all you, especially you people that are victims of this opioid nonsense. You need to stop it, too, notwithstanding your problem. You need to stop it. You can roll it on over. Get in If, you, if cannabis works for you, roll it on over. Start fighting for this. Tell them to get out of your sewers and start going after the doctors and the federal government that's fraudulently allowing this harm upon you. That a, a judge in New Jersey found kills people. You don't want to be one of those victims. You don't want to be a victim to these, uh, what were the opioid idiots? Opi, opi idiots? This is the government. These are the people that control you. Stop, step up for your own sake, if, if nothing else. Don't let government take control of your life, because when they do it, they're going to use a robot to sniff your sewers. They don't stop the front-end problem. They come at the end. And I don't know, do you think that's going to solve the problem? You can read the article and find out it's not, but it's going to be something that someone's going to make make work money, aren't they? And the problem continues. And the government, the state government, doesn't turn around and look at the federal government, because this is the obligation that you could press the state government and the attorney general for, to go sue the EPA and the DEA for allowing opioids that kill people from the New Jersey judge and that the jury, the jury from the, the, the other place says is, is actually used for medical purposes as well, as well as a compensation judge. And you're going to go sniff sewers? You're going to go suck up sewer water and test it for opioids instead of stopping it going in the mouths of people and making them victims to this addiction? That's the turn. That's the, the state's rights stepping up. Where are you to go enforce that, folks? We watch the harm and we just allow it to keep coming on us. We, they do it to us and we stand there w- with our mouth agape. Why? Why? Why does everybody argue with me on this? Why do we have something else that we're going to have to do? Oh, I got to do other things. I don't know what. If this is killing you, folks, this is an important thing to get focused on. If it's not killing you and you have some kind of sympathy toward what the FDA or DEA does against people, and it has in that subset things that will affect you, then why aren't you attacking this? I'm telling you that we're seeing enough information. If you package this up, you could be attacking lots of places. It's like it's exactly how I, I operate. In fact, another conversation I had about how you address this. You look for every avenue of attack. Even if it's an inferior avenue, especially if you have enough people. You get people to attack in certain spots, and they, then you get them working against themselves. There's, it just opens the door. This opioid thing is fa- self-inflicted wound. Any self-inflicted wound is easy to attack. Why aren't people doing that? 
Why do we have to read the jokes, the story jokes about somebody going, some con- the town that now is going to create all the expenditures of funds to go sniff sewers? Instead of making the, the, the health official coming up and outlawing the prescription of, of these drugs, not, or out, uh, calling out the fraud and then going as a, as a town going to the state attorney general to say, you need to stop this fraud. We we got we're now having to do this to go sniff sewers instead of stopping the problem, so we don't have to sniff the sewers. The sewers. And here's an alternative: notwithstanding all the illegality, it's not unlawful; it's just illegal, and that is causing is killing people literally. Why isn't that an argument? Why haven't I don't hear my, the people that listen to me? telling me that that's what they've done, and I'm just sitting in awe of your awesomeness. As I said, I'll give you the lead to the to the track, to the pathway. You can grab it, grab it up and go. Take the baton and run down the track. Do it. Whatever it takes to get you to work. You don't have to be helpless. Despite despite any anything that you're under impediment that you have, you can throw it off and, and work a little bit better uh, toward toward this. In fact, it, it, my mind, and it, it, this is partly how my mind works as a joke, and it's not to degrade anybody's disability. I would use my disability as 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 the cause. I'm just too incapable, and so now you got to help me. I'm a blithering idiot, so you're going to have to help me fix this. But here's what I find, and now you bring out your your genius comes out inside the, the shell of your of your disability. I don't know why we. This is almost like a game at some level. You could play it like that game, video game. I can see as well as I think about this. Sometimes I do because it's it doesn't hurt so bad. In this case, it's not hurting me at all to tell you use your disability against them and and help have them help you because you're disabled. When they deny you, then you then you decry then you decry the discrimination, don't you? All of a sudden, now it's on. The, now now you're wearing the crown as you start playing with them like a cat and a mouse. And all your object is to get someone else that has a, some authority to say something quicker and get something quicker than you would because they're going to ignore you. That's that. That's the reason why you even do that. Otherwise, you'd make a phone call and it would be fixed, wouldn't it? The fact that you can't make a phone call on something of reason and law uh, against something illegal as making harm tells you you're in a prison. I don't know why people don't get this as well. And they'll argue with me about all this on how the best way to go about it. And anybody, all these years, no one goes to hardly does anything, actually, actually. So the government's options are not what would fix the problem. They're going to be really in that, you're looking right here in this monitor and checking, uh, and they already know that they, they can't really get it down to the opioid uh, user, uh, victim addict, because it's in the public water system. They, they can't, I guess they can sniff right outside your, your, your cesspool pipe or whatever, or I guess they could invade your property at that point. I don't know. If you're not going to fight against it, you're gonna, they can do all kinds of stuff. But they they will look at the end. They'll sniff up your tailpipe instead of finding out that maybe you shouldn't be putting it in the intake. And they're the ones that cause that. I don't see how that's not a, just a self-defining, self-evident victory in that discussion right there about this problem. And this problem I see everywhere that the government involves itself. It puts itself in the wrong place. That's your clue to fix it. That's your clue that it needs to be fixed and that you can. Because when they went there and didn't actually do the solve, solve the problem, you have the answer. Then it's just a matter of turning and saying, well, if they went to the wrong end, they used their authority at the wrong side, and now they're making more victims. And allowing the killing of people because the judge in New Jersey now recognizes it. Stop making sense? I say that's where you look. And all you geniuses out there that see it, fix it. You're the ones that see it, fix it. That's the ones that I'm saying you can do any something about it. But when government takes it over, they go to the end of the tailpipe. What, what we need is the the... the the problem where it comes into the problem fixed, don't we? We need to stop there. They're not going to do that. We have a study moving on now and things that injection, uh, taking injections from the front end and not and finding problems and trying to go to the back end, not, not finding anything there or putting impediments on that. You, you understand that they're using evidence out of the sewer to try and go find people to go test to see neighborhoods that would be the highest users. 
Well, do you think that would stop if the doctors stopped giving them to those people? Well, maybe not on the black market, but that's the war on drugs. So you're back into the black market side. And so we have a bigger problem, and it's all government controlled. They don't want to stop that stuff. If they want to stop it, they would uh, do what I've been saying on how to stop it. They would have the government suing the Fed, FDA uh, for its agreeing to opioids and the, the, and the, con, and the, de, the, uh, the condemnation of, of cannabis. There's enough evidence now to, to do this. And, and uh, the judges and the, and the facts showing that people are dying is that police power that the state has the power to do something about. And when you have an attorney that won't in the, in the attorney general, now you've got a political problem and you have a bar problem. And all that can be addressed. It's just a matter of whether or not you want to. Uh, so we have injection site problems. Uh, they don't. They look at the bot. They, 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 the government is content with making you victimizations of their evidence gathering, or making victimizations of their system. And we haven't figured out that we need to stop it before it starts there. And yet the evidence is there to point out. As we got another, I had to, again these tabs are kind of old, but they're kind of in series in a way. Uh, we're going to go through some things here about how we have the evidence. Uh, and yet we tend to want to ignore it, and we want to get an argument with people that would tell you otherwise, like the government, that we now see in North Carolina, they'd rather s suck, suck on a sewer for an opioid instead of going and stopping the thing, the very thing that their so-called police power says they need to do. And we don't step up and say, but what you're needing, saying you need to do is a fraud, and that's killing people now. we got evidence. Be that one, folks. That's all I'm asking. I'm not trying to get in a fight and get in trouble. I be the one that's going to bring this, this position. A sudden infant deaths following hexavalent vaccination, a neuro, neuropathologic study. Uh, this, the point about the SIDS I think I've talked about before and the vaccination I think I've talked before. I think we did, we read that, uh, another report. What I got, what caught me on this one was the neuro, neuro, neuropathologic study, the neuropathology here, the neural condition. Your nerves, your, your neural, neural pathways, the things that are affecting that. So this is a, this is indicating that SIDS is caused by the hexavalent vaccination and it's causing these damages. And I want you to understand that that's the one for the babies, but this is what these things do. They cause neurological damage and we're going to you'll find this is a consistent thing if you just start making the notes about it and keeping your evidence as those of you that may uh, want to know about vaccinations for your little ones that want to know whether they're damaging or not this study will tell you that you're you're raising the extremely raising the level of, of possibility that your little one will get will die of SIDS is goes up greatly with this vac vaccine and I mean I could do I read more? Or do you, I let you now know to go read at the blogcaster? Uh, do, I don't know if I like, I don't really don't like reading. You can read all this stuff. I want you to know about it. My point is I want you to know about it to protect you in the first instance, but also know about it in case you're interested to protect others. Or you're outside of that and say, well, I can help because I have an understanding about this that I can contribute to somebody else. But here we have more studies and we have a pointer as to what's being affected. I guess that's, for me, the most important thing in all this health stuff, is these, these compounds are coming in and affecting body systems. And that's how I used to do this. I used to do nutrition in this a long, long time ago and do herbs. I've told you all that before. And my in, insight became one of understanding system, the system function, not the, the effect and forgetting the cause. And the cause is not, I sneeze because I have a cold. No, it's deeper. You gotta to learn to keep going deeper. And, in, and we don't, you'll find out we don't have the knowledge we need. And this is where you start to find out that the, the, that means science so called. And, and these medicines don't understand what they're doing either. And that's why when you look on the data sheet, you see they, they can harm you. Because if they understood the system, they would probably be, I, I think they could make things that didn't do the side effects. And I think we've seen the answer to that. How about if we just keep ourselves healthy up front? How about if we keep we learn that better? So we have no knowledge of that as well. As well. Uh, but uh, so, but you get the system to operate something. They'll inject you with something. They'll cause the self-inflicted wound, and then you pay for it. And now we're seeing that this uh, hexavalent vaccination will raise your little one's uh, odds of getting uh, dying from SIDS. Uh, then. Uh, 
I also want to point out it's not all it's the numbers you start getting. In the United States, more than 23,000 healthy babies die before they turn one year old. So in the time period they're giving these vaccinations, and we see the study saying it's doing uh, neurological damage. Uh, we have another report that says, and relating to the SIDS, uh, that healthy babies are dying. That should have been a real big clue. And the other clue is that they don't. the system doesn't care because it's not about caring. See, it's not about that. It's about treatment, and it's about the bottom line. It's about the the bean counters and how much they can extend you out. And if they give you something that needs a side effect, they can give you something else that needs a, gives you a side effect, and they can sell you something else. And they can give you in the care, so-called care system. It's not at all. It's the exploitation condition. And so here we are. If you're not capable and you die, you're never going to have rights, right? You'll never be anybody to take in by engagement. That's the first thing. Secondly, if you're neurologically damaged, you're not going to be able to function like you need to, right? So we have not just a mass, an educated mass of people. They have to be have capacity in the world, be vital in the world. And this is another attack uh, vector that we. I think we don't. We we know it. We'll complain about it, but we don't appreciate that vector, and we don't do much about it. Actually, we'll complain will not attack it the way I've been suggesting that you do. This is another agency that would be involved here. Same type of thing, same type of process of building your evidence and coming after them for really not doing their mission, doing everything but their mission. Identify what that is and make a nice and clear statement about it. So this story here tells us that healthy babies are dying. It's not sickly people, sickly, sickly, sickly babies. And then it goes on from there to tell us that there's more and more problems. It's not just the first study that finally comes to the to the point and the, about that. Let me call your attention back uh, back to 2008 when we were told again a new study. Then mitochondrial autism is real. Vaccines trigger cannot be ruled out. So that was a question. But they do have this thing called mitochondrial autism. Well, we're back to the neural networking system. We're in the system of the, the things that make that up, the things that protect that system, the things that work in order to uh, protect it or let it degrade, right? These triggers that are on in our bodies that are now misfired because of an injection by the government in the wrong, doing the wrong thing underneath a plausible right uh, color in, instead of doing the thing that they ought to be doing. So we have a back in 2008 where this new study was telling us we were going to have the problem that we read and I entered into this whole discussion about the neuropathology. This is all here and known. This is not unknown. I don't know why more people aren't pulling the points together to hit a package deal to the agencies and say, here, you're you're not putting this together. One of the focuses I seem to be on right now is the is the effect, the impacts and the cumulative impacts. Which brought up the idea as I was talking to my friend, we we're talking about the 5G relative to the purpose. If you go read the documents from the government, one, 50%, there's only two things that they're doing 5G for. One of which is for cars, autonomous cars. And it occurred to me when, when my, and again, talking with people on points without arguing with each other and talking on points allows more knowledge and more speed to come on. And you're looking at listening in a different way. When he said it that way, I hadn't heard, though I read it, I hadn't, thought about it the way he was talking about it, the way he was seeing it to the knife then said well you're right and the way you said that made me think of the fact that if they don't have these autonomous cars then they can't know what they're going to need for a system in other words they're saying so called because of one of the needs that will fulfill the need of an autonomous car which doesn't exist right now they claim that the the, the antennas are going to have to be so far apart when they get the thing to actually work they might find they're going to need twice as many antennas. So how can they actually know when the thing that they're making the system for doesn't even exist yet, which is the first problem? And so you now can dive into the fact that it's, it's really a misappropriation of funds to even think about a, a, a infrastructure for something that may never exist, let alone knowing how can you know what's going to have to exist until it exists, and then how can you foretell the future of a system you don't even know can exist if it can exist? I just gave you a list of, what, four or five points that would make a good uh, addressment against the FCC on that point alone, on half of what they think the two-part points of the need for 5G. 
I'd never thought about it in that way before, but talking to someone without fighting amongst each other and trying to work this through, little ideas start coming. So how do they, how do they know beforehand? When you find out that these vaccines aren't really understood, you, you got it right out of the words of the mouth of the people who use the lobbyists, who are the scientists inside the system that lobby for the system. They say, we don't know about these vaccines. I talked to you about that weeks ago. That's right out of his mouth. Make a transcript, folks. Make, an, a, make a transcript, make an affidavit. There's evidence. They don't know. If they don't know, how are they, how is the FCC or the FDA or the EPA or any, how when they don't know of a system, about a system, can they even come to a standard, let alone come to an impact, uh, qual- uh, impact decision, let alone a cumulative impact system? How are they making cumulative impacts on a system that doesn't even exist and may not be able to actually exist? I'm not sold that autonomous cars will work. Myself, I don't know about you. There's enough evidence that they're not. They're not what they're saying that they are. And what I said, the reason why they might be something is they're going to get rid of you. You will be forbidden from those areas. That's how they'll make it work. And you'll just be subject to the system that they put in place in order for that to work, which means all your all your radiation, whatever it'll be, is going to be, it's not focused inside that system. It's not contained. Not like they stick it inside a Faraday cage, but moving on. The vaccine triggers cannot be ruled out. So 2008, they told us about the new study then uh, that correlated with this neural neurological problems that these vaccines to, to give. Mitochondrial disorder in vaccines, injury, stuff you need to know, information you need to share. My children should not receive vaccinations because they have underlying mitochondrial disorders. Now, this brings up the fact that you... Your body is not wired to receive this stuff. This is immense. This is the main problem. They haven't understood. They may understand. They're not telling us if they, you may not be able to receive an injection because you're, it's antagonistic to you. Where's the studies about that? Where's the checks for that before an injection? These are all things. Are the experts even studying this? If they're not, why not? Why aren't you, someone who's interested, actually bringing this up? Here's another report. There's something, an underlying problem. I want to read it. It, Fascinating information. I wish I had the time to go through it. Fascinating stuff. But it's all pointing to a condition that these things the government injects into your system will not work out. And now, I'm, as I was realizing with my friend, well, if you can identify that they don't even have a thing they know, how are they going to know how it could work out? And when their mission is to know that, and they can't get there, why aren't we saying that? Because even the experts couldn't speak to the unknown. You don't look forward into something you don't know about and divine it for a set of rules that's supposed to keep you safe when you don't even know. I don't know why that's not the primary discussion right here. But, so there's a mitochondrial disorder that all speaks to the finding of the SIDS. This is a factual def- this is a factual damage now being developed throughout the use of this uh, medicine. All right? So this is, for me, it's not the story that they, what they're doing. It's that it's doing it and that you got to put it together for, for yourself. Why? You may not die, your kid may not die from SIDS, but it might be the injection itself. Samoa has seized all MMR vaccines after deaths of two toddlers. Toddlers? What is that? What, age two or so? This is just outside the first year. It's not over. The victimization's not over here, folks. And so this is a territory of the United States. Samoa Health Authority has stopped all children's vaccines on the island nation after the deaths of two toddlers. Folks, how many people are they allowing to die through the food system right now for various different diseases we'd never heard of just 20, 30 years ago in the food system? Salmonella, Listeria, Vibrio, what, what, how, much, how many more names of these, these nature's, uh, nature's bacteria, fungus, and, and, and yeasts are out there to kill us? Nature's pretty, pretty awesome, isn't she? Now, we hear about two toddlers and they stop vaccines and they'll let hundreds of you die on your food system and let thousands and hundreds of thousands of you die at the hands of pharmaceuticals and millions of you die at the hands of their licensee doctors. has to tell you that this vaccine thing may be really serious. And I wonder why. 
they may know something they're just not telling everybody. Maybe they're, again, this is the silent cover-up. But you could, those of you that have little ones that are going to get this MMR, we've talked about it. There's more evidence on this thing than I can even tell you about, and I don't even remember it. My mind is not even working to be a recorder anymore. In fact, that may be coming a problem as I move along. I almost, I almost can't keep up with everything I actually ought to know to make me sound really, really, really smart. How well, well rounded information I have. I just can't keep up with all of it anymore. I don't really have a desire to. I realize you either take what we have today and you hold on to that with both hands and you work with what you have today or you, or you're not going to do it. It's that simple. I don't need it. It doesn't matter how much I put in my bag. It doesn't matter how big my briefcase of proof is. If I'm not going to take the first step with the slightest amount of provable, self-evident proof, what difference does it make? Samoa stops their vaccines on two deaths. They'll let you die in the thousands everywhere else. What's the? I don't even know if I've analyzed this anomaly. This, to me, this is a, the incongruity is too great to even uh, get into. If I'm not, I'm not going to go there. You can. What is this incongruity in the government coming underneath the? the well, we're here to protect you. No, no. There's a bigger, a bigger story going on. And you can be the one to start to dig it up. Not your opinions, not the fear-mongering part. Literally, dot to dot, how? Like I've explained, you can do in lots of other areas, at least the things that I do, where we have done done this. So mitochondrial disorders, again, neurological problems with, the, with all this. These, uh, all these things work on defeating you from the inside. Uh, moving on here, mitochondrial disorder and vaccine stuff you should know was from the vaxxed. Of people again, more information. So now they're, you know, this this vaccine kills toddlers. Do you want to have the next victimization of that? Do you want someone that's going to force you? You're not going to bring out the data sheet and say, "Wait a minute, now I'm going to make it." You're going to write a contract with me that if I'm going to be forced, if you're going to force me, I'm writing a contract with you, the doctor, that says that you underwrite the safety, notwithstanding the danger of, of being killed or damaged by this data sheet. If you're going to force me, at least do something. And then I would say move that out as a, as a, as a knowledge for everybody. And you think that, um, and then move on about the, the government stops two deaths of toddlers, but we allow the mass of people to be harmed. And there's a reason why, and you end up hearing it may be the bottom line again. Uh, as I move this thing through, uh, John Rappaport came up with a video that went, it was on the, it's on the, the YouTube. I didn't get the YouTube address. I just, I just posted his, his Twitter. It says vaxxed. Former U.S. Army medic speaks out about anthrax vaccine injury she had witnessed. She was a medic in the in the in the uh, military. She uh, makes comments in this link that that tells uh, vets, that tells the soldiers that uh, you're just a lab rat. She's not happy with this now, and she kept quiet when they told her to. Men and apparently women in black suits and black SUVs with black dark glasses came to give them what they were supposed to do and what they weren't going to do after she made the identification that an animal protein vaccine like the anthrax will, when it's injected in someone that is antagonistic to it, that we just heard on the other story, will give them what we are told is Gulf War syndrome. And she said, soldiers, that she was was witness to in Alabama that were given the vaccine were discharged or had or determined to have Gulf War syndrome and they never left Alabama. And she says that one of the reasons that she figures out that this was done is because a vet or an officer, whoever enlisted, whoever, whoever you get out and you retire costs the government a lot of money. And if you've been trained and go trained to go to war, and now you go see war and you see what you see. When they come back, they don't want your knowledge in the world. They want you dead within 10 years. So there's a plausible reason why they want to give you the harm as a soldier. Lots of information here. And I have to take, the, I think the woman is earnest in her, in her statement. More importantly, it's consistent, folks, with everything we see coming down. And it just lined up right with that other story that says, if you have a mitochondrial disorder in you and you receive a vaccine, it will harm you. And she, she'll tell you in this little video that she had a grandmother tell her when her grandson was in the hospital for reacting after a vaccine 
that this very same reaction happened to him when he had a tetanus shot, and they both have an animal protein uh, makeup, which he was allergic to. It's a different style of, of, of resistance, alert, an allergy. Mitochondrial disorder, I suppose, is more of a genetic thing, possibly, maybe epigenetic. Maybe it's a thing that happens because of all the other things. But anyway, here's some follow-up information. You start connecting these dots, and you, I say make them a factual statement to be presented to any, any agency, anywhere, who wants to impose this as the thing you have to do to protect you. And you show, and you show, where did you make the statement? Where did you have the rule that test that requires the test for any kind of a adverse uh, reaction? It's like a peanut allergy, if you will. Where did they test everybody before they promised to inject everybody? And she'll tell you in the in the in her statement. While she was in the military as a soldier, she was government owned, government property. You did what you were told. You're not there to think. When it was your time to get an injection, they didn't. The army doesn't care what your your body, whether your body is will receive that or not. You will get that injection. She says it because there's big money behind it. I guess Blackwater's behind wrapped around that too. 17-minute video. You might really want to listen to this. See what your government's willing to do when the when you're when you they deem you to be property. And I tell you, if you don't know about property, you probably are. Now, I also said earlier in the broadcast, when I told you about how you do property, you're actually land, and that there's no there's no way for them to there's laws that say that the government can't intrude. Now you're starting to see the the truth of the law that sits as a foundation that every every savings clause speaks to. That if you don't know it, or you argue with me about it, then you don't, which means you don't know it, you will be susceptible to what she's telling you. Because I think the government, if, if she thinks she was free outside, I say no, the government still thinks, treats you as chattel, cattle, or property. And it's the people that will listen to me and will bring up, have a word, as I say, the word in your mouth. These things that show that they don't have the right or that they haven't been, they can't even provide the, com, the complete, they can claim to have their expertise, but it can't be fulfilled in all the things they omitted to do. And those omissions are frauds. And those are felonies when they're coming against you on your, in turn, on your rights that you think you have or your property that you think you have or your, 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 um, the, the ones that are more obviously written. And if you go to the Constitution, like the right from association the corollary to the right to associate. If you don't have all this in your mind about how this all works, your property, you're going to be dealt with. You're going to be that government issue, GI. All the soldiers know this. She knows it. She'll tell you that she's not now, and I think so. I think it's in her mind that she won't be. But there's so many other facets of this that make us that that susceptible condition, that property, uh, that, they, that you see it like in California. Everybody is supposed to have to do this. Why hasn't anybody stood up and just did the most basic con, uh, most basic discussion that I've offered today? Uh, so they do it, the government does it the wrong way to continue the control, to continue the harm, to continue the ability to make you believe they have regulation power, to, to cost your time and your rent, to parasitically eat from you. There's nothing about this that, uh, in the current aid, uh, current day, how this is working, that reflects anything I see or, or learned or I can find. Uh, when I know more about the law, nothing. It's all this adjunct life. It's a parallel construction, and we are continuing to agree with it. And the government's parallel construction world is to feast off of you parasitically. Everyone says, "Oh, it was started by a development corporation." Yeah, you were, you were the property, the slave to continue it, and you did. Pretty, pretty simple. She identifies the GI, what GI means. She claims that she's no longer. What more important is that she's coming out with a witness that shows you a whole lineage of facts that does not shine a good light on the government, those that are in the government, or us as ignorant people that don't respond. CDC warning, and I guess got to move on, into, uh, move on from what the government will do, what they allow Two toddlers die in Samoa, and they shut down the whole vaccination program. Did they do that anywhere else where kids died or got, or where they go to the vaccine court and found out that there's hundreds of kids that are now getting billions of dollars over over a few years? They stop any of the vaccination programs anywhere else? 
something's up there. Something's going on. Some, it's too too small an area probably. But so they let all this happen. They let two kids die, toddlers die. They stop a vaccination program. A few people die, and uh, CDC now steps up and warns uh, Kellogg's Honey Smacks, do not eat this cereal. Uh, public service announcement, do not eat this cereal. Honey Smacks. Who would have thunk it, folks? The CDC's right on this one. Don't eat that cereal. They'll turn around and let you get the opioids and let you go ahead and get vaccinations, let you do whatever you need to do. They say you need to do engage the WHO, not the OWL, not the rock group, but the World Health Organization, the WHO, and go by their standards, and they will not stop and interfere with the bottom line one bit with their pharmaceuticals. But you you let a few boxes of honey smacks out. You don't, don't eat those honey smacks. And I'm saying don't eat those honey smacks. Something's wrong with them. But I'm not. I'm seeing an incongruity in the enforcement policy here. On the one hand, they don't want you to eat the honey smack because they'll hurt you. True. On the other hand, we have a we got three hands coming. Uh, on the other hand, we have a Samoa. Two toddlers die on a vaccine. They shut that whole program down. But the opioids? No, no. You're gonna you're gonna choke those out until they need North Carolina. Some small two bit place in town in North Car- North Carolina is gonna start sniffing sewers. You seeing the? Are we seeing the problem here, folks? A lot of this is us not doing much about it. So we got from our feed system, <laughs> completely racked. All this food security. All this came out after those food security laws, didn't it? Remember those we talked about, those five or six areas? that So th- this is the UN, the Sustainable Development, coming after your face. There's 17 different areas in Sustainable Development at this point. They were coming after like eight just years ago, 2008 or nine, or nine or ten, somewhere in there. Those, food, those housing security, food security, all this other security securities. Yeah, nothing. This is what you're seeing now, since I hope you p- appreciate that connection. Uh, but we also have the uh, chemicals, uh, better living through chemistry, moving into what the government starts to allow. They allow Monsatan, which is now Slayer, uh, who bought out Monsatan and is going to destroy Monsatan's name. Well, Monsatan didn't get out without having a lot of lawsuits, uh, uh, thousands of them, and only finally one guy steps up and does it. Enough finds a court. After thousands, it was the first one that makes a big deal. Landmark lawsuit claims Monsatan hid cancer danger of weed killer for decades. So this is, again, self-inflicted wound. The government allowed this stuff on the promise of the of the corporation uh, that it wasn't going to harm anybody. It wasn't persistent. This is the biggest thing that gets me. It wasn't supposed to be persistent. Now we find it everywhere in all our food. Well, maybe even those honey smacks. But it has a different pathway of harm. At age 46, Dwayne Johnson is not ready to die, but with cancer spread through most of his body, doctors say he probably has just months to live. Now Johnson, a husband and father of three in California, hopes to survive long enough to make Monsatan take the blame for his fate. On 18 June, Johnson will become the first person to take the Global Seed and Chemical Company to trial, on allega- to trial on allegations that it has spent decades hiding a cancer-causing dangers of its Roundup herbicide products, and his case has just received a major boost. Last week, Judge Curtis Carnow issued an order clearing the way for jurors to decide not just scientific evidence related to what caused Johnson cancers, but allegations that Monsatan suppressed evidence on the risk of its weed-killing products. I'll just end there. Uh, you can read the story. This is important. And this touches on the two things I just told you. Uh, a couple of things. The jury is now able to decide by this judge's order. So now you now they're putting they're putting it before the jury, supposedly of your peers. But what did they go after? Not just that it did a had a caught the chemical has a causative effect and harm, but that they did a fraudulent act to be able to do that. That's exactly what I told you just a little bit ago. It's the same method of approach, folks. So, but, it, but anyway, so it, it, I see, you see it right in the notice to us what's going on and what's happening. Finally, somebody broke through. They asserted a fraud in the ability for them to get it, which would show you a whole bigger problem if you get into what happens on this. Now, they somehow were able to argue that they have the evidence. That would be very hard to get if they got it. More power to them. You need evidence, what I keep saying. But they allege that Monsatan suppressed evidence in order to get the right to do the harm. That's that's a not just a causation statement. 
and that opens the door. That's what I keep telling you. You got to watch how to do it. You just don't come with one. You come with a big package of reasons that offset each other on the re- obligations of a of a charging party to do so. In other words, I just don't say you did the crime. I've got to bring the evidence of things that I can produce in the case that are going to show how you don't have a, a, a response to that, even though you may have it. You'll bring a defense because you have one, but it mis- may not be valid. That brings the cause into bearing, and that becomes on the record harder for, for someone to sweep it under the rug if they want to. In this case, I don't know about the judge wanting to or not. What they brought was a fraud allegation against the company. So you see the, the omission to do right becomes a crime on its face. And it became actionable for this court case. And this guy might very well, well he's going to at least get his chance before the jury. And what comes out now at the trial, I reported on this that it was going to happen. Now the trial is starting to happen. What's coming out in the very first few days, Monsatan bullied scientists and hid weed killer cancer risks, a lawyer tells the court. So we have now more allegations that Monsatan is bullying scientists. In other words, they're now attacking that, that fraudulent representation by Monsatan. This is part and parcel of the things you have to learn to do. You can't just go in with your opinion. You have elements to construct. And I, I tell you, if you don't have those elements, don't don't continue till you go back and find them. Find the way to get what you have to get. In fact, that part came of discussion. How uh, Certain things are coming down the pike. Uh, some things are happening and rolling. And I said, okay, well, don't stop there. Now you want to come around and have the federal the federal agencies come back at this problem in a state a state issue problem with an agency that takes federal funds, you get the, the federal the Fed coming back. You need a group of people to go invoke the federal authority backwards onto the state, and you start putting the pressure on these people from different angles. You just don't think you're going after an opinion that you are right and then there's self-evident proof and all. No, it doesn't work anything like that. We're, they've got this thing switched so that you have to take some concerted action in the right ways. Again, they've asserted fraud. Now they're saying that not only was there fraud, there was coercion and bullying. They call it bullying of scientists. Now, I don't know how they keep them silenced, but here we have not the precautionary principle working for you. It'll work for sustainable de- development to f- defeat you. It'll work for sustainable development to give a carbon tax on you, and your transportation plans are all coming out based on that. In fact, that was another thing that came up. I was able to look at a condition, a new, even just a basic sidewalk system came up. And the and it was in days, and people are complaining about the lack of, of clear view down the road and the obstruction to traffic. And I said, that was all planned. Based on that complaint, I went and found that it's, a, it's actually what they were denying at the county level was a bigger project is a federal project. They do this, they obstruct the, the travel because they want you to on your bikes. They want you in those buses. The obstructions weren't at the bus level. They're only at the car level. They plan this stuff against you. You don't even look forward. It took me five minutes to figure this all out. Just on a complaint, folks. Well, how do I know that? Because I have a, I have my x-ray eye. I get the decoder ring. I know exactly what's, what the out, see, it's outcome based. They want you obstructed from what you want because they want to put in what they want. And you're going to move from what you're doing into what they're offering. It's pretty simple. It ends up all being federal anyway, but but here. So the Monsatan does all this. They bully scientists. You know, I hear you see lots of scientists that are complaining about the credibility of science. Well, if, when you became adjective scientists and just uh, didn't know you were specialists and weren't scientists, actually, you don't know that, and you'll get angry at me for saying that, then that's our problem. You're, you're, missing, you're missing a whole lot already, let alone not having any anticipation that maybe people have a say in their mouth over whether they want, notwithstanding all this expert knowledge, whether they have a say or not in the matter. In other words, maybe I just don't want that vaccination. Maybe I just don't. Just that simple. No, they look all past that because it's it's no more about what you want and your constitutional rights. It's about a parallel constructed universe where we now see that not only does the government bully you, but they get license to the corporations that are the bottom line that the government protects to bully the people that promote itself. That's all based in that fraud charge, folks. That's not based in the harm, is it? 
You understand the leading story here is that the when Satan bullied its scientists on the previous sentence, the previous statement that said that it, the, 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 the plaintiff charged a fraud against them. That speaks to that only. It has nothing to do with what, what the glyphosate might do or the inert. It doesn't even talk about it. In fact, this case isn't even about the inert ingredients, although they speak toward glyphosate as a product. I don't even know if it's going to come up. But what are the, what are the, you see our scientists are being uh, bullied and this and that. This is like water under the bridge for most of the, most of us listening to me. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about take this information, line item facts now, uh, and put them in a list and go after this stuff to stop it. Why? Because they're spraying glyphosate on your food. It's now you. Everyone is listening to me. You can't get away from it. It's in the water. It's everywhere. We talk, how many stories do we need? Start building a case for yourself. You're affected, whether you want to know this or not. Whether you want to, well, I say want to know, yeah, you know it. I mean, do you want to, do you want to respond to it? Or do you want to be a complaining and a whining dolt? I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm just, I wonder sometimes about us. But uh, love you all to death, but but I don't know. Uh, what about us here, folks? Uh, and so, so is there something, why would uh, Monsatan be bullying scientists? It wasn't like we didn't know. I think this story comes out of like 2005 or something. I can't remember now. A sex-changing weed killer. A friend, uh, another friend, sent me this a long while back, or a short while back, and uh, it reminded me that to remind you, this is not unknown stuff. The bountiful fields of the United States are awash of atrazine, about 36 million kilograms of the olderless white powder applied on the farms to grassy weeds uh, every year. Some 225,000 kilograms of the herbicide become airborne and fall with the rain up to 1,000 kilometers from the source. All that atrazine may have a sexual effect, turning male frogs female. I'm going to end right there. There's a guy who doesn't like that study. He wants more. My point is, okay, you have evidence back in 2008 and five, whatever it was. Uh, this is a chemical within the products, a different product, that causes the gender change. And I'm wondering... What's the question about all this confused gender confusion now then, maybe? Maybe. Isn't it as plausible as all the rest? Like I heard one scientist was talking about, do you want to know what, you know, can we talk about the, the frogs getting smaller or less in number? And I'm looking at, yeah, I'd like to know about that. That's what happened around me. I'd you have frogs everywhere. Now they're really small and a lot fewer. But then they threw in the, the poison pill that that climate change caused. So you're a scientist. I'm, I'm thinking. I didn't even respond. Uh, you're a scientist. Why did you go to climate change? I've got tests that say our ground has weighed 10,000 times more aluminum and other chemicals. Why would I go to climate change? I have tests that I have measurements that say ultraviolet light is much more. Why am I going to climate change? Some, some unprovable thing. I have chemis- chemicals in the environment that affect amphibians. Why am I going to climate change? And this is your problem. You're going to have to pull that out. Say, well, why? we don't have to go to climate change. Here's a test. It says that I've got so much aluminum in the soil. It looks like, and now here's another test that says that that affects the reproductive organs of a frog. i got atrazine. I can test it in the soil. My frogs are messing up. Oh, my son just turned girl. Are we going to pull this together and save ourselves, or are we going to let it kind of go on? Well, here's a old story. It's like not even new news. Just pointing out of why wouldn't Monsatan want to want to bully scientists, but but because it's it's provable what's going on. Can I prove that against Monsatan? No, but it gives you the pathway. You qualify all this stuff. And so Monsatan is getting ready, apparently, to get rid of the scientists because we're finding out a new story right this week, AI getting closer to replacing animal testing. Can you believe this stuff? What they do right under our nose. Scientists test new chemical compounds on animals because we still don't completely understand the world around us. Can I read that again? Scientists test new chemical compounds on animals because we still don't completely understand the world around us. Didn't I open this broadcast with that? We don't know enough about us to even be showing how we can have impacts, to have a standard. Didn't I just say that? Admission here. We don't even know about the world around us. Of course we don't. 
How arrogant will we be if we thought we thought we did? How wondrous it is that we don't too. That's the other thing that gets me. I get excited about. It. I get that side. But all the stuff there is to know that. But what I didn't learn in thirty in three decades is a, almost a crying shame, literal crying shame. Weep deep. But here I am talking about this nonsense that these people brought on underneath the cover of all this stuff, knowledge of all this stuff. And this is what I'm talking about, the fraud. So it's not good enough that scientists need to, they're, they're going to get rid of the scientists so they don't have to bully them. We're going to prove to you that AI can now do chemical testing. A, but on an ad, artificial intelligence system published in the research journal Toxicological Sciences shows that it might be possible, oh, now it's a question, might be possible to automate some tests using the knowledge about chemical interactions we already have. The AI was trained to predict how toxic tens of thousands of unknown chemicals could be based on a previous animal's tests, and the algorithm's result were shown to be an accurate as live and as accurate as live animals tests. Did that make any sense to you? Did that make any sense to anybody I just read that to? That the AI was this is a test on known chemicals, but the AI was trained to predict how toxic chemicals of ten thousand thousands of unknown chemicals based on previous tests. How did that happen? Unknown chemicals with previous tests. How do you test them when you don't know? Is this problem I told you about? How do you make regulations for something that don't exist yet? How do you know cum impacts are cumulative? Is this internal fraud in the system that none of you all are pointing out? That it's so easy to do so. It's right here in this story. But they're going to get AI, pattern, high-speed pattern recognition, to be a test feature. And they tell you it's already limited. And it's limited again. And then limited again. And yet they're trying to get you to say, we can do unknowns. And test against known results. How, folks? You listen to this nonsense. This is strictly coming out of the industry. They're getting rid of science. They're going to give you a butt. You're going to be a monkey with a, ro with a, with a white coat on. And you're going to be pushing a dang button. And they said, well, the scientist said he pushed the button. And the button said AI. And the AI said, uh, Say, Om, worship me. The algorithm can predict results in nine different tests from skin corrosion to eye irritation, what the authors say comprise 50%, 57% of all animal testing done in the EU in 2011. How did they do that? They had advanced, because of the EU law, all the information about the chemicals had to be released. And so they were able to take from this massive database, like almost a over the qu three quarters of a million pieces of data sets to be able to pull this off, but they still tell you it's a limited test and it can't actually do unknowns and it certainly can't compare those unknowns to known tests. They were never done for them, folks, but they claim it's accurate. And why are they, why are they doing this? They're doing this because they need to get rid of stop bullying the scientists. Because I've found out when you get into the scientists who actually understand what's going on. They don't go with the agenda. They don't just go and hand it over the stuff. This is what the, uh, what the Chris Exley, he says, wait a minute, I've been studying aluminum. I'm the, the, the one that's only been studying aluminum at this level. I'm now finding problems. And so he's immediately, now that he finally makes a statement after studying it for a couple decades, he's immediately destroyed, immediately made to look bad, immediately tried to, uh, to, uh, to cut out of the herd. And so this is the nature of this thing. Now, let's get rid of the scientists. Let's make AI all-powerful, folks. This is your future. This is the rules are going to be made on this. And they're going to say, why isn't it good? And you're not going to have an answer for it. Because an expert said it was. You see, the trans they second-stepped the translation. Now you're in some real trouble. And this is what I've been worried about. They're starting to do this. It's like the nested Russian doll problem. How do you get at a nested corporation? is what they're doing here with the very setup of how the process works for the rules. AI, IBM's AI wins debate against humans. I want to do a little investigation here, just a light. I just touched this stuff. You can do research more. In the year 1770, a chess player automaton known as the Turk debuted in Vienna, Austria. It happened to beat humans at chess, losing very rarely, losing very rarely. That could be a decision on a chemical, folks. All of a sudden, your society starts to die off. Maybe your society starts to change gender. Anyway, it was actually an elaborate hoax. The human being was a real champion chess player manipulating the Turk, 
via mechanical means from the inside. Think about this, the corporations and the system and the inside. It took uh, 227 years for the actual computer to beat humans at playing chess in 1997. Now, 22 years later, an AI created by IBM, represented by a black box on stage, but actually consisting of a group of computers in one of IBM's databases named Project Debater, it was the master debater, has defeated humans in the art of debate twice. Now, I'm going to stop there. You can read again. Read all this stuff. I want to get, I'm getting to the point. I want to get to the point of this stuff. This is now setting up the godship of AI, and it's just pattern recognition. Computers do this really, really, really well. Your searches are all basically pattern recognition. What letter characters you put out, and it just matches those characters and shows, gives you an output in uh, less than two-tenths of a second. How's that? Pretty cool, huh? So, so fast, are they, they're now doing images so fast as this stuff. But when you read, and you read about this story, you're going to find out that the AI was programmed with all the possibilities. And you're going to hear how that you need to read how this discussion goes on. And you're going to hear it's not necessarily what it sounds like. It really is like the trick. What you're seeing in the article is a promotion of AI. They say that the AI debated, but in fact, the AI didn't contribute like it's, like ABM promotes to the debater or debaters. It displaced the argumentation and therefore exalts itself. If you, it doesn't itself, the promoters of it exalt it. It doesn't aid, look very carefully. It's not aiding someone to make a decision. It's displacing that decision for its own. And then it looks like it's the authority by having access to millions and millions of archive, uh, online articles. And what my... Okay, so you have the access to this database. No people, I mean, very few people can keep up with this. If it's just any, any matter, subject matter, you wouldn't have all the knowledge that you need. And even if you had the time, you wouldn't necessarily have all the knowledge that you need that a computer can use as a pattern recognition real quickly. It just lists everything that's available and then goes through algorithms to test for certain pro problems and comes up with stuff. My interest in this was that when they talk about uh, talk about the Internet and all the re millions of research articles, online articles, that, in that includes all the bad ones, that it answered and beat these guys twice means that maybe there's no fake news on the Internet. What do you think? So to me, that's another deception somehow. What information could they filter? I mean, it can't be 100%, right? We, well, fake news is everywhere, right? Especially the organized stuff. But they researched millions of, uh, having access to all this information gave them the ability to be so-called be a debater, not as a suggestion to a debater, as, as a device that displaced the augmentation to the debater and replaced it with itself. To me, this was like the definition of artifice, the art, mastering language. The art is artifice. It's the root meaning. Fiction, it's, it's deception. The art of a debate was in the title of the, was in the article. It's the artifice of debate. You have to listen very carefully to this article. It's a very instructive article, what they're doing. They're exalting AI, pattern recognition, that's programmed by a few people somewhere. Promoted as a, the truth, the law, the evidence, the fact, and promoted to be infallible. Promoted to be in aid of people, and in fact, displaces people. And it's still only a pattern recognition system. And that pattern recognition system is being programmed. And where it went, this this uh, story went and said that it was a, it went to all the articles online on the Internet to get its information. Well, I'm glad they had a nice filter to say, we're only going to talk about that its information, because when they did that to another machine, it went out and it trained itself to become a psychopath, remember? <laughs> How did it do How did the one machine not become a psychopath? It's pretty interesting as well. So there's a whole lot of manipulation. There's a magic show going on behind the scenes that we're not been told about, but when we want to use these uh, these machines, these AI, 
notwithstanding we want to claim how useful they are, I want to show the deception about its augmentation, its displacement, and that it's not always going to be itself going to be harmless. When we see the AI killing machine, in quotes, set to poison mammals in this region, rabbits and cats. There was a, an island in New Zealand. They got uh, predators. Uh, they've changed the whole bio, uh, biodiversity of the island. Uh, and, and they're going to make a make a, an AI machine that goes after mammals. Folks, does science consider you a mammal? And what is this AI? AI startups and the Wizard of Oz technique. Proving what I was saying, that these pattern recognition things, that they can identify a mammal. I Believe me, they'll tell you, they'll identify. And they're making a killing machine for mammals. When you're determined, when you're finally determined to be the predator on the face of Gaia, interfering with biodiversity, do you think that might cause you trouble? And yet, what do they have to rely on with all this uh, supposed power and computing and all this intelligence, artificial in fact, I'm finding out, uh, I look around now, I see animals are, are organic AI. If, they, if I, I don't intend to diminish what they do, but they're this, or I'm noticing they're organic pattern recognition specialists. They're pretty cool. The AI startups and the Wizard of Oz technique. It's hard to build a service powered by artificial intelligence. And yet they're telling you it's going to run a car. It's going to decide what chemicals are no good for you. It's going to be a killing machine to get rid of feral animals, mammals. So hard, in fact, that it, uh, some startups have worked out it's cheaper to use, easier to get humans to behave like robots than it is to get machines to behave like humans. I, I think that said it all. We don't have to go any further. There's a whole lot more to say. It's, it's interesting to read. Uh, the gump, when it comes down to the bottom line, you can't replace this thing called a human. This, this animal, this mammal called a human, it still functions as the best functioning monkey they got. No AI can compete. And maybe there's a little bit of hope here. But the point is AI is what everything's going to, and it's a false prophet. They have to go to people at some point. But they want to change those people, don't they? Those mammals. Treat you like an animal, they identify you as an animal, whether that's true or not. It's all hyper, it's all belief system. A gene editing tool tried out on mammals. Here it is. Okay, so if they can't get that machine to get you, run you down in the field and take you out because you're just interfering with the biodiversity of the, of the world as some central authority has sustainably determined. Uh, they will get you somehow, and this is not even unknown information. It's just the notice that they're n they're not bashful to not tell you. They're telling you now. They're gene editing on mammals. It's not just some test tube thing. Gene editing tool tried out on mammals was the CRISPR story. Remember, there was a a uh, quick little question: Should we? Well, it's answered already. As I've said before, these things are coming so fast. It, when they tell you it's happening, it's, it's thinking about happening. It's likely happening. They're just getting it past you now. Uh, but they're now in the, the CRISPR technology, which we realize has the same problems as all the others. It creates its own problems uh, in the in the invasion, the injection, the governmental injection and license to inject causes uh, front end problems that they don't fix. It's a self-inflicted wound that they're just going to go. Remember, they're just going to go. The only answer the government will offer you as a solution for for you is that they're going to sniff your sewer pipe and then blame you for having to go sniff the pipe and finding something. They can't pin on you, but that's you're just an enemy combatant anyway. Remember about that little dimension? So CRISPR is now being applied to the mammals. If we ever thought there was an an ethical body out there trying to keep track of everything so that we don't get a little too far ahead of ourselves, this is the biological cherry red button. You, you, you know, we questioned about whether or not you're going to be selecting your little ones. What do they have? Their abilities, their capacities. Yeah, that's going to sound real attractive until we start finding the, ad, the unintended consequences, the facts that you don't really know reality, do we? We're just making it up as we go. We don't really know the world, but we're going to say we do anyway and do this. 
And then we say, oops. And then we say, let me stick a straw up your sewer to fix it. Doesn't seem like the world that I, I think you all want to go into, or your little ones. But that's where it's headed, because we're not doing anything. We're not really doing anything. And was this even a, was this even a, really a question in, in a way? Was this ever a, the so-called advance of science? Really not. It's certainly not in the last 20 or so years. We know that the, we know the dangers are there. There are, have been put in the memory hole as to how dangerous they've been conceived. And, and this is what I think we start missing when I keep telling you the imperative, this is not even just me. I don't even know where I know this stuff, except for, I mean, just logically putting your mind to something, critically thinking on it, makes no sense. But it's not like it's not known in the system. Back in 2016, we were told how genetic editing became, and became, folks, it made a determination that it was a national security threat. I just read the headline. I don't. I don't even know if I want to read more. You need to read this stuff. You need to start putting it into a into a reality. That we've moved from 2016 as a national security threat determination into just doing it. When I talk about the cherry red button, it's not no joke here. Not no joke. Good 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 grammar, don't I have? It's behind a woodshed. What do I care? Who listens to me anyway? Actually, I know you are, but who listens to me? Who really listens? It'd be interesting to find out who listens. Be fun just to find out how powerful you guys all become and just keep mowing them down. But it doesn't matter. This technology they're bringing on has already been determined by the federal government to be a national security threat. What? what? <laughs> this is fascinating, don't you think? This is scarier than heck. But maybe not. Maybe you all got, like to love to be scared. Maybe that's what they got. We got, oh, I just like to be scared. Don't like to do nothing about it. In fact, I pay money to go into the theater to be sprayed. The, the very technology they're saying that they're going to be putting on mammals, the same killer mammal, the AI, how your DNA is actually the code they're going to use, and it's like, I don't know, six feet long or something. Each cell has that much DNA information if you don't think this is a fascinating thing. They're going to mess around with all that. And it's already, in 2016, a national security threat. And they're still going to do it. You can't believe you're living in a real sane place. And that you don't take these evidences, I'm telling you, and put them in a nice little package and go address those people that are making their decisions and claiming that there's no science against it. This is a policy against it. This is a policy that raises it up to national security, and then you're going to have to get the determination, we can't talk about that because it's national security. Then you know you're in real trouble. All that nanoization intrusions into you they're doing, that's where you're going to find it's going to pop out. It is a national security threat. They're already doing it. You're already being epigenetically, environmentally changed. And where do we hear that? What is it changing? Well, what, what effects? I'm talking about the uh, neurological problems with all this injection. Brain tumors rise in glioblastoma multiforma. Incidents in England from 1995 to 2015 suggest an adverse environmental effect or lifestyle factor. So I'm reading through this. Or I get, come to it. Come to it. I'm coming to it. Cause why? What am I? What am I looking for? You go through the Well Health Organization again. It's centralized stuff. I, I'm looking for now. There's a study that says we got brain problems. Why? I'm looking for environmental things. I'm saying let's get to it. I read the list. It's the last one. They go through all the five different things that they think it is. All right? What do you think the last one is? They talk to brain problems. But your cell phone. And so all of y'all, here's another check. If you just want, here's another. Now they got a test. They've got a time period of, of impact uh, that goes from 95 to 2015. They list five potential causations, none of which they've looked for. Understand there's no causation. But they have isolated five of everything in the world, everything in the universe, to five things that would cause it. The very first thing was a CT scan. 
That's what got to me to say that I'm waiting for the cell, the cell phone. They didn't mention cell phone in the CT scan. How many of you folks know, get CT scans that we would have an epidemic of CTs, of brain tumors for CT scans? Even if CT scans did cause all this, and let's say it does. It, it wouldn't be enough to, to, to be a blip anywhere. And so I immediately see that. I said, well, that's the frequency that I'm looking at for the phones. And sure enough, it ends up being in the list qualifying my anticipation of what I should find. If CT scans are one, I should find phones as another. It comes up, proving the point. Here's another proof for you, a study. It's right evidence right here, folks. I just look through this stuff and I find it everywhere. I don't know what the big problem for us is. Keep using your phones. If this has not been entered into the record, why hasn't it been? If if the, if these five issues have been reduced, look at the entities that make the make the guidelines on what impacts or what the safe levels are, and say, but did you check for these things? And if you didn't, how is your how is your opinion complete? It's defective and deficient. Really, that's attacking the experts. And then you turn around to the agency and say, how are you taking their word for experts when they, they, they can't be experts, say? Here's the study that proves that they're not looking deep enough. And I'm only talking about not the causation of these five things. I'm talking about the fact that they have relation to this brain tumor stuff. And what about that brain tumor stuff? Is glioblastoma maltiform symptoms. Go look them up. And Frumpy likes that I go around full circle in these things. I'm going to get back to your mitochondrial problem. Here it is, folks. This same system, this environmental thing that we have. You got the chemistry that's no good. You got your injections, your pharma, and we got this environmental environmental impositions. A couple of which are not just chemistry, but they're also electromagnetic. Comes up to point out that these glioblastoma multiforma also interfere with the glial cells, and those are central to how your neurological system works. There's many glial cells, and they have a different function, and you can turn some on and turn some off. And some help you, some repair you. And in some, most instances, another one starts up, and it defeats the repair. It actually causes it to be blocked from repair. It's all on the Internet, folks. It'll take 5, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it is to find this out. Like, I'm running out of time, but... Neurologia, look at it, the glial cells, important. They're all interfered with by all the things I talked about today. So, frankly, that was for you, I guess. Round and round and round. Same things over and over and over. And I know I see many people stepping up and locking this down, grabbing the basket, Say, here's all the facts of the stuff you're not looking at. You need to look at it. And how can you be complete in your mission if you're not? And making that the issue. And going into the court and say, they didn't do, this law that they're doing, this rule they're using is not sufficient. Shut it down. Don't apply this vaccination thing when you don't know these things. Shut it down against me. Oh, and those similarly situated in equity. How's that? Why is this such a hard thing? You know, I'm certainly outside of traffic tickets, but doesn't matter because this is all the same stuff. But anyway. Most people don't quite get this. I wish they would. Uh, I hope you got a little more impression about how you can this week. Thank you again for tuning in. Remember, thank you for what you do at reallyremedy.com. Uh, thank you for uh, all you do behind the scenes for all the other hosts and everything else and all, all the streaming that's going on, all you all that support uh, the broadcast. I do appreciate it. Uh, Grimner made me a new graphic. If you want to see that, I've uh, applied what he did with some other things to make them fit on Minds.com. I now have a header at Minds and a header at Twitter. Uh, thank you, Grimner, for, for that. It's kind of cool. And I used the uh, the whoop-ass can and the, the second one to, to try and do something there to make it kind of interesting uh, dynamic in Minds. Uh, just, just having fun, a little bit of fun with it. Uh, thank you again. I'll be here next week. Tech Diffs or Nature Wealthy. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 